Hello everyone, and <clears throat> welcome to a new series. I don't know why my throat did that. Uh, this could be a new little mini-series that I'm going to do on the side of things, just because I've always liked creative, I just never really had a purpose for filming it, or playing it really, once I started playing hardcore. But lately I've been feeling a bit creative, and I wanted some sort of outlet for that. I wanted the place where I could just build whatever I felt like, and not have to worry about gathering resources or anything like that. Just so I can also get some inspiration for any projects I'm working on the SMP series or uh, the hardcore series. So today, as you saw in the title, we're going to be building a little sawmill. This is going to be the first part of many for this world, is because I, I want to build like a whole kingdom type deal. And this just give you a little side series we do, just time lapses of me building parts of the settlements. Uh, some videos will be shorter, some will be longer. This one's going to be pretty short because... It's just a sawmill, but at the same time, it is it was a 40-minute build or so. So I've cut that down quite a bit, but I just wanted, you know, something to outlet and something easy to do for days where I have to work on a project for Hardcore or SMP that takes a while. Like, the Hardcore project we're working on right now, which is the Iron Farm, is going to take a little bit because I'm waiting for villagers to breed up and stuff. Which, honestly, n now I should be able to do it. I finally got the villagers for that into the breeder, but uh, for this whole kingdom, I'm going to stick with a sort of medieval style, but for some reason, I just felt like building a sawmill today. I don't know why. So I spent a little while looking for this uh, river type deal where I could build a sawmill, but I think it came out pretty good. I tried to come up with a decent looking mechanism for it because obviously with a sawmill medieval, you think water wheel, at least I do from playing things like Skyrim and stuff. And I wanted to make it a little more secure down here so it actually looks like it's been, it could stay here instead of it's just hanging over the water. It's actually sort of cemented in, if you will, like stoned in. And yeah, I think it came out pretty well. Uh, we do do a little bit of uh, under river terrain modification here in a minute, but it's not super interesting, so I didn't show much of that. But... I don't know. I feel like this is just a good uh, series for me. Definitely takes my mind off things. Stressful things like homework and trying to keep up with YouTube right now. Plus, I don't know, we're at that stage in hardcore where we don't get to build a lot of cool looking things right now. So this is nice to do. And also, I've always wanted to go do a series like this because I always loved watching, like, um, Yoskes Shin. Is it Shin? I think it's Shin. It's S I. G it's S G I N something like that. That was a while ago, back when I used to watch Yardcast. <laughs> uh, those are the days. Those are simpler times. But back when I used to watch his Let's Builds, I was always like, man, I wish I could do stuff like that. And then I finally got decent at building in this game, so now I kind of can. And right here, we're just using the basic sort of stack of logs design that everyone uses, because I mean. They don't call it classic for no, no reason. Like, it's classic because it's the go-to type of design. As you can see, I came up with the, the grindstone idea as, like, the rolling platform for the wood because it's the only thing that kind of looks like it. Uh, someone suggested using stone cutter blocks, but I feel like the saw blades wouldn't have made sense since I had the saw on top. And we actually didn't build the water wheel for zero reason. I actually make it look like it's the reason it's sawing instead of just having it stuck to the side there. And we use diorite for the sort of uh, s slot that the log goes into. I don't know why. It just sort of... I was looking at it. I'm just like, this stands out enough. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we put pistons here just because it makes sense. I tried to keep the whole ideas of the redstone in, like, Minecraft's realm. So, like, you can see here I've got an observer that, like, theoretically would be observing the, uh, what do you call it? The log. <laughs> uh, actually, no, I changed it to a grindstone. Never mind. It's observing the grindstone, so the water wheel would rotate, rotating the top platform, which rotates that, and so on and so forth, and the observer picks it up and causes the pistons to turn on and off via the hopper, clock type deal. You can use your... It's really just more of an imaginary type thing, because obviously you don't build sawmills in this game. But, I don't know. 
I wanted a reason for the water wheel, so. Nice. It's it's a cool little concept. <laughs> I like this location too. We're gonna do a lot with this. Uh, I think next episode we're gonna be just working on some townhouses. Maybe a little shop, bakery type deal. I don't know. I might just toss in townhouses throughout it. But I also have world edit installed, so I can use that to kind of replicate some of the housing and stuff. Which, I mean, may sound kind of boring, but at the same time, if we build like 10 to 20 different house designs, we can copy those around and it won't be noticeable. And that's what most big city builders do anyway, so... Not, ever, not well, for a decent chunk of them. Not, some, some of them <laughs> actually build each house brick by brick, and then build it again and again and again even they might even stick the same side but not use world edit i am one person i'm a one-man team sometimes the time lapses you'll see huge groups of like 20 30 people building and i am not that <laughs> i am just one man having fun in a single player creative world i like this roof design too i added some slabs just to add some height to it and stuff it wasn't meant to be simple i wanted it to be a little bit more intricate roof and I did change a few things off screen because I went back and was just looking at it. And I was like, there's a few things I could fix really easily. But they weren't like major things, just tiny little minute details. But yeah, I used the campfires put out as our sort of split logs because the only thing that looks somewhat like that, I think it came out pretty good. And I had to put it on top of a log because I wanted a difference in height, but there was no, if you stack them, it's floating. So it hmm, didn't look very good. <laughs> We should be coming up to the paths soon. Let's see. Nope, filling in the roofs there. I think we do a little bit of interior stuff with fences. Yep. And now we should work on the paths, hopefully. <laughs> I I like the way this came out, though. I changed that up to upside down stairs just because it fits in a bit better. And some of these videos, maybe the longer ones, won't have as much commentary. And I'll probably go through and add music just because i won't be able to talk for like 20 30 minutes depending on how long it is the pads are super simple just uh granite and gravel with cobblestone stairs and uh when's the other block i used normal cobblestone blocks and then the lantern designs are relatively simple we bone meal a little bit just to add a bit because we will go back and add more detail throughout after but this sawmill is gonna sit a little bit on its own there probably won't be houses right right next to it, but nearby, and then it's going to get denser and denser as we get closer to the main centerpiece, which is obviously going to be a big old castle, which I'm excited to do. I love building castles and just like really just any medieval type style. Uh, you can think of the chimney as sort of just like friction from the turning of gears and stuff producing heat, so you have to dispel that somehow by putting it out the top. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little mini clip type time-lapse things, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!